Good morning, gentlemen, or afternoon. This is the recording for blocks two and five um, for Tuesday. This is the second section for the chapter that we are continuing from yesterday on the Roman Empire. We are kind of um, thinking about how the Roman Empire transformed the economy, the government, the society, and the culture. Um, Let's go down to our essential questions. Oops, I wanted to go up first. Home. So we have a few terms and names. Civil War, Julius Caesar, Triumvirate, Augustus, and Pax Romana. Our first things that we are going to do is we are going to be taking notes on, um, we're gonna be doing a bulleted chart kind of in addition to our questions that shows how Roman changed as it became an empire. It was just, was just a city state, and then it moved on to becoming an empire, conquering other areas, changing its societies. So for each of those terms, we're going to write a sentence explaining its significance. If you also want to define that term in your own words, and get extra credit if this is the... Um, oh. Um, assignment that I choose for the quiz, then you would be lucky enough to get extra points for that. Okay, using your notes that you created that I was talking about, what changes do you consider negative and why? So it gives you one kind of bullet here, dictator claims sole power that could be either positive or negative. You're going to make a decision as to whether it is negative or not, and those other changes are negative. And you are going to kind of explain why you think those are negative the, um, using evidence from the text. Um, sorry, I'm getting a cold. Um, so main ideas, those are level one questions. Again, three, four, and five are what factors contributed to the fall of the Roman Empire. Um, I'm also going to have you explain what you think was the most important factor contributing to the fall of the Roman Empire and why you think that was the most important um, what were the main reasons for Roman success in controlling such a large empire? What measures did the government take to distract and control the masses of Rome? So even simple things were very deliberate in terms of controlling the masses because there was such a huge population. You're going to explain what measures they took. Critical thinking and writing, what role did Ju Julius Caesar play in the decline of the Republic and the rise of the empire using evidence from the text? You are going to answer that question. I want three sentences for question six. If you want to mark that down on the side of your paper, go forward. Seven, analyzing issues. What aspects of Roman society remain similar from Republic to empire? So two sentences on Recognizing effects, what was Augustus's greatest contribution to Rome, Roman society and why? That's a judgment that you make given textual evidence. Um, three sentences on that one and you're going to explain why it's more important than say another aspect of his, of his rule. Um, Right, number nine is write a brief dialogue in which various members of society comment on conditions in Roman Empire during the Pax Romana. Participants might include a senator, a civil servant, a slave, a merchant, and a formal, former soldier. So you're going to have dialogue. So you can even put like, um, you know, servant, colon, and then he says this. Um, slave, colon, and then he responds with this. You can have kind of also in addition to dialogue, any kind of showing language in terms of, oh, he looked away or he looked down at his feet in shame or fear, whatever. Um, using showing language in between those dialogues just so it isn't too dry. Um, you should have four pieces of dialogue between each. So that would be eight pieces of dialogue total. Only one of those can be less than five words. So you may have one of them say yes. 
that is your one piece of dialogue, less than five words. So that is the only one that you can do with that. Um, da -da 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 -da, getting rid of my face here in a second, and then I will start reading. Um, I'm going to start here at setting the stage. Setting the stage. As Rome enlarged its territory, its republican form of government grew increasingly unstable. Eventually, the Roman government gave way to the formation of a mighty dictator-ruled empire that continued to spread Rome's influence far and wide. Okay. The republic collapses. So this is going to start with this changes in Rome where you are taking bulleted notes either on the side of your reading or on your paper. Rome's increasing wealth and expanding boundaries brought many problems. The most serious were growing discontent among the lower classes of society and a breakdown in military order. These problems led to a shakeup of the Republic and the emergence of a new political system. Economic turmoil. As Rome grew, the gap between the rich and the poor grew wider. Many of Rome's rich landowners owners lived on huge estates. Thousands of enslaved persons, many of whom had been captured peoples in various wars, were forced to work on these states. I lost my place, sorry guys. Uh, by 1000 BCE, enslaved persons formed perhaps one third of Rome's population. Small farmers found it difficult to complete, compete with large estates run by the labor of enslaved people. Many of these farmers were former soldiers. A large number of them sold lands to wealthy landowners and became homeless and jobless. Most stayed in the countryside and worked as seasonal migrant laborers. Some headed to Rome and other cities looking for work. They joined the ranks of the urban poor, a group which totaled about one fourth of Roman society. Two brothers, Tiberius and Gaius, oh, sorry, Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus attempted to help Rome's poor. As tribunes, they proposed such reforms as limiting the size of estates and giving land to the poor. Tiberius spoke eloquently about the plight of the landless former soldiers. So the primary source we have by Tiberius Gracchus is the savage beach. beasts have their dens, but the men who bear arms and expose their lives for the safety of their country enjoy nothing more in it but the air and light and wander from place to place with their wives and children. Tiberius Gracchus quoted in Plutarch the lives of noble Greeks and Romans. The brothers made enemies of numerous senators who felt threatened by their ideas. Both met violent deaths. Tiberius in 133 BCE and Gaius in 121 BCE. Oh, did I go too far? No, I did not. A period of civil war or conflict between groups in the, within the same country followed their deaths. So that is one of your vocab words that you are going to explain the significance of civil war. Military upheaval. Adding to the growing turmoil with, within the Republic was a breakdown of the once loyal military. As the Republic grew more unstable, generals began seizing greater power for themselves. They recruited soldiers from the landless poor by promising them land. These soldiers fought for pay and owed allegiance only to their commander. They replaced the citizen soldiers whose loyalty had been to the Republic. It was now it now was possible for a military leader, supported by his own troops, to take over by force. Eventually, he would do just that. I'm going to have you read, pause and read this History Makers on your own. Um, so if the guest teacher could pause the recording so you guys can quickly read that and highlight or underline what you find important. Okay, so I'm going to start reading. You guys should have paused and read that. Julius Caesar takes control. In 60 BCE, a military leader named Julius Caesar joined forces with Crassus, a wealthy Roman, and Pompey, a popular general. With their help, Caesar was elected consul in 59 BCE. For the next 10 years, these men dominated Rome 
as a triumvirate, a group of three rulers. Caesar was a strong leader and a genius at military strategy. Following tradition, he served only one year as council, or sorry, consul. He then appointed himself governor of Gaul, which is now France. During 58 and 50 BCE, Caesar led his legions in a grueling but successful campaign to conquer all of Gaul. Because he shared fully in the hardships of war, he won his men's loyalty and devotion. The reports of Caesar's success in Gaul made him very popular with the people of Rome. Pompey, who had become his political rival, rival feared Caesar's ambitions. In 50 BCE, the, at the Senate, at Pompey's urgings, urgings, ordered Caesar to disband his legions and return home. Caesar defied the Senate's order. On the night of January 10, 49 BCE, he took his armies across the Rubicon River in Italy, the southern limit of the area he commanded. He marched his army swiftly towards Rome, and Pompey fled. Caesar's troops defeated Pompey's armies in Greece, Asia, Spain, and Egypt. In 46 BCE, Caesar returned to Rome, where he had the support of the army and the masses. That same year, the Senate appointment appointed him to dictator. In 44 BCE, he was named dictator for life. Caesar's reforms. Caesar governed as an absolute ruler, one who has total power. However, he started a number of reforms. He granted Roman citizenship to many people in the provinces. He expanded the Senate, adding friends and supporters from Italy and other regions. Caesar also helped the poor by creating jobs, especially through the construction of the new Republic buildings. He started colonies where people without land could own property, and he increased pay for soldiers. Many nobles and senators expressed concern over Caesar's growing power, success, and popularity. Some feared losing their influence. Others considered him a tyrant. A number of important senators, led by Marcus Brutus and Gaius Cassius, plotted his assassination. On March 15, 44 BCE, they stabbed him to death in the Senate chamber. Beginning of the Empire After Caesar's death, civil war broke out again and destroyed what was left of the Roman Republic. Three of Caesar's supporters banded together to crush the assassins. Caesar's 18-year-old grandnephew and adopted son Octavian joined with an experienced general named Mark, Mark Anthony and a powerful, powerful politician named Lepidia, Lepidus. In 43 BCE, they took control of Rome and ruled for 10 years as the second triumvirate. Their alliance, however, ended in jealousy and violence. Octavian forced Lepidus to, to retire. He and Mark Anthony then became rivals. While leading troops against Rome's enemies in Antolia, which is the end of the Silk Road, Mark Anthony met Queen Cleopatra of Egypt. He fell in love with her and followed her to Egypt. Octavian accused Anthony of plotting to rule Rome from Egypt, and another civil war erupted. Octavian defended the combined forces of Anthony and Cleopatra at the naval battle of Acti Actium in 31 BC. Later, Anthony and Cleopatra committed suicide. While he restored some aspects of the re Republic, Octavian became the unchallenged ruler of Rome. Eventually, he accepted the title of Augustus, or Exalted One. He also kept the title Imperator. Imperior, imperator, supreme military commanded, a commander, a term from which emperor is derived. Rome was now an empire ruled by one man. So now you're going to pause again and read the history makers, Mr. Augustus, or rather, Imperator Augustus. So guest teacher is going to pause that, take a second to read. And now I'm going to read after you've paused. A vast and powerful empire. 
Rome was at the peak of its power from the beginning of Augustus' rule in 27 BCE to AD 180. For 207 years, peace reigned throughout the empire except for some fighting with tribes along the borders. This period of peace and prosperity is known as Pax Romana, or Roman peace. During this time, the Roman Empire included more than 3 million square miles. That's much bigger than America. Its population numbered between 60 and 80 million people. About a million people lived in the city of Rome itself. A sound government. Romans held their vast empire together in part through efficient government and able rulers. Augustus was Rome's, Rome's ablest emperor. He stabilized the frontier, glorified Rome with splendid public buildings, and created a system of government that survived for centuries. He set up a civil service. That is, he paid workers to manage the affairs of the government, such as the grain supply, tax collection, and the postal system. Through the sen though, although the Senate still functioned, civil servants drawn from the plebeians and even former slaves actually administered the empire. I'm going to go down here to the map before I start reading that next sentence. So what I want you to do is I want you to... Does it say it? No, it doesn't. Um... Circle any areas that you recognize that we've read either yesterday or today, such as Rome, Carthage. Um, we have spoken about Alexandria in the past, so you will circle that. Um, and I want you to, if you can, locate where Antioch, um, sorry, what was the name of the city? It was in the... Sorry. Um, okay, sorry. Locate the two ends of the Silk Road if you can and label them start and finish. Remember, one is going to be near um, or north of Italy. The other one is going to be somewhere in China. Northeast China. Not in Russia, though, so be careful. Going back to the reading, if you if the guest teacher can pause while you do that. After Augustus died in ADE 14, the system of government that he established maintains the maintained the emperor stability. This was due mainly to the effective, effectiveness of the civil service in carrying out day-to-day -day operations. The Romans managed to control an empire that, by the 2nd century ADE, reached from Spain to Mesopotamia, from North Africa to Britain. Included in its provinces were people of many languages, cultures, and customs. Agriculture and trade. The agriculture was the most important industry in the empire. All else depended upon it. About 90% of the people were engaged in farming. Most Romans survived on the produce from their local area. Additional food when needed and luxury items for the rich were obtained through trade. In Augustus's time, a silver cone called a denarius was in use throughout the empire. Having common coinage made the trade between different parts of the empire much easier. Rome had a vast trading network. Ships from the east traveled the Mediterranean protected by the Roman navy. Cities such as Corinth in Greece, Ephesus in Antalya, and Antioch on the eastern coast of the Mediterranean grew wealthy. Rome also traded with China and India. That was the name of the city that I was looking for. I was trying to remember earlier. Stop barking. A complex network of roads linked the empire to far, such far-flung places as Persia and southern Russia. These roads were originally built by the Roman army. Ooh. For military purposes, trade also brought Roman ways to the provinces and beyond the Roman world. Throughout its history, Rome emphasized the values of discipline, strength, and loyalty. A person with these qualities was said to have the important virtue of gravitas. Gravitas. The Romans were a practical people. They honored strength more than beauty power more than grace, 
and usefulness more than elegance. Oh, it even broke down the good emperors and the bad emperors. Oh, Nero and Caligula, you jerk faces. Marcus Aurelius really was a good guy? I mean, all right. All right. Notice that Augustus is not listed anywhere on there, and neither is Caesar. So strange, since we just talked about him. Most people in the Roman Empire lived in the countryside and worked on farms. In Rome and smaller cities, merchants, soldiers, slaves, and foreigners, and philosophers all shared the crowded, noisy streets. Here, people from all walks of life came together to create a diverse society. Slaves and Captivity Slavery was a significant part of Roman life. It was widespread and important to the economy. The Romans made more use of slaves than any previous civilization. Numbers of slaves have reached as high as one-third of the population. Most slaves were conquered peoples brought back by victorious Roman armies and included men, women, and children. Children born to slaves also became slaves. Slaves could be bought and sold. According to Roman law, slaves were the property of their owner. They could be punished, rewarded, set free, or put to death as their master saw fit. Slaves worked in both, the, both in the city and on the farm. Many were treated cruelly and worked at hard labor all day long. Some, strong, healthy males, were forced to become gladiators or professional fighters who fought to the death in public contests. Other slaves, particularly those who worked in wealthy households, were better treated. Occasionally, slaves would rebel. None of the slaves re slave revolts succeeded. More than a million slaves lost their lives attempting to gain their freedom. Gods and goddesses. The earliest Romans worshipped powerful spirits or divine forces called numina that they thought resided in everything around them. Closely related to these spirits were lares, who were the guardian spirits of each family. They gave names to these powerful gods and goddesses and honored them through various rituals, hoping to gain favor and avoid misfortune. In Rome, government and religion were linked. The deities were symbols of the state, and Romans were expected to honor them not only in private rituals at shrines in their homes, but also in public worship ceremonies conducted by priests and temples. Among the most important Roman gods and goddesses were Jupiter, father of the gods, Juno, his wife, who supposedly watched over women, and Minerva, goddess of wisdom and the arts and crafts. During the empire, worship of the emperor also became part of the official religion of Rome. By the time of the empire, oh, sorry, society and culture. By the time of the empire, wealth and social status made huge differences in how people lived. Classes had little in common, the rich lived extravagantly. They spent large sums of monies on homes, gardens, slaves, and luxuries. They gave banquets that lasted for many hours and included foods that were rare and costly, such as boiled ostrich and parrot tongue pie. Mmm. However, most people in Rome barely had the necessities of life. During the time of the empire, much of the city's population was unemployed. The government supported these people with daily rations of grain. In the shadow of Rome's great temples and public buildings, poor people crowded into rickety, sprawling tenements. Fire was a constant danger. At the end of this par um, section, you guys are going to read this history in depth gladiator games. Wow, that's a tongue twister. On your own. To distract and control the masses of Romans, the government provided free games, races, mock battles, and gladiator contests. By AD 250, I'm sorry, ADE, ACE 250, there were 150 holidays a year. On these days of celebrations, the Colosseum, a huge arena that could hold 50,000, would fill with the rich and the poor alike. The spectacles they watched combined bravery and cruelty, honor and violence. In the animal shows, wild creatures brought from distant lands such as tigers, lions, and bears fought to the death. In other contests, gladiators engaged with animals or with each other, often until one of them was killed. 
During this time of Pax Romana, another activity slowly emerged in the Roman Empire. The practice of a new religion known as Christianity. The early followers of this new faith would meet with much brutality and hardship for their beliefs, but their religion would endure and the spread throughout the empire and eventually become one of the most dominant faiths in the world. So you're gonna do your questions. I am going to add a 10th question to this, which you are going to answer in as much detail as possible. I want you to compare um, Rome to America today. So there are several ways you can do this. You can do this with um, this kind of, think about what, what things, what entertainment we use to distract ourselves. Um, think about our economy. Think about this gap between the rich and the poor. Think about the role of religion in this current kind of climate of um, disunity in America with the current administration and people of differing ideas or faiths. And tell me what you think that means for America as a democracy, which Rome had started off as well. And think about the, what that means for our future as a country and as a world power. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean we'll go the way, same way as Rome, but I want you to consider that and give me four sentences. Um, oh my gosh, Shanti. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you again next week. Goodbye.